Soon there will be 700 beds for treating Ebola patients in Monrovia. But medical staff are among the first victims, and in the Liberian capital, half of the health centers are shut and just one hospital is functioning. Many of the city's inhabitants, pregnant women, children suffering from malnutrition or malaria, and road casualties, are without access to medical care. How can they be provided with the care they so badly need? For MSF, this question takes on a whole different meaning when health workers themselves are at risk of becoming infected. The issue of disease control exists at all levels, whether in Ebola treatment centers, regular health centers, or during mass distributions of antimalarial drugs. So this includes flow of patients, when people come for their hygiene kits and mustn't have any physical contact with the person distributing the kit, hand washing, and during all the stages in the treatment process. Disease control is absolutely crucial. De la prise en charge, le contrôle effectueux et de, de première heure. For Médecins Sans Frontières, the next step is a mass distribution of anti-malarial drugs, which hasn't been done before. The first symptoms of malaria resemble those of Ebola, and patients are struggling to get treatment, while malaria too continues to kill in West Africa. Iabid, a town in North Jordan close to the border with Syria, has become home to several hundred thousand refugees who have fled from the war in Syria. Many are children. Gaza, post-Operation Protective Edge. This latest conflict has exacted a very heavy toll on the civilian population, already suffering severe hardship because of the Israeli blockade. In both these conflicts, children suffer helplessly the consequences of the devastating violence. MSF is setting up psychological treatment programs to support them. The programs are really for under 12-year-olds. But we know that where children are concerned, so are their parents. In fact, the younger the child, the more their psychological trauma stems from the parents' distress. So we provide these kids with psychological support, but sometimes, quite often actually, we have to treat their mothers too. War, sexual violence, population displacement, serious illness. MSF works in a multitude of settings. Providing healthcare to refugees is one of the challenges the teams face. How to integrate mental health treatment with primary care to give people suffering mental distress the strength to carry on in such extreme circumstances. Humanitarian aid workers in Iraq see two kinds of displaced people. Those who have managed to escape to a region of Kurdistan unaffected by the fighting, and those trapped in dangerous areas like the provinces of Anbar and Kirkuk. The crisis in Iraq today is regarded much more from a geopolitical point of view rather than a humanitarian point of view. There is no meaningful attempt to reach the population trapped in conflict areas. There is no safe access for those attended, uh, attempting to flee violence uh, from those areas. And all the issues that so far haven't been thoroughly discussed at proper levels in the country. MSF teams are doing all they can to access people trapped in regions torn by violence, but they are limited in what they can do. The temperature is dropping fast, and humanitarian aid is woefully inadequate, even in relatively calm areas. MSF teams are providing medical treatment, distributing blankets and hygiene kits, and installing latrines, showers and water distribution points in one of the camps in Zakul, a town near the Turkish border. MSF continues to scale up its operations so that the fast approaching winter doesn't spell a health disaster for these families. MSF treats wounded patients from Iraq, Syria and Yemen in its hospital in Amman. Since it opened eight years ago, doctors have been treating people suffering from infections that are resistant to one or several antibiotics. 
Half of all patients arriving at the hospital already have multi-drug resistant bacteria. What we are seeing now in our surgical work that more and more antibiotics are needed uh, and many patients cannot be treated with the normal range of antibiotics. In fact, with the rising level of antibiotic resistance around the world, we are almost now running out of options in most of the places that we are working. Seeking to fight this menace that endangers the health of countless people, there was broad agreement on several issues among the region's experts and doctors attending the Yaman conference. The Middle East has abnormally high rates of antibiotic resistance and is particularly badly affected. The priority is to set up a network of experts in the region to tackle this issue because for these patients, antibiotic resistance means longer and more costly treatment and sometimes there are quite simply no antibiotics capable of killing the bacteria. So what works best? Nutritious supplementary foods or cash? Aid agencies looking to prevent severe acute malnutrition in young children opt for one or the other. The Epicentre team in Niger assessed the results. And this study found that the best way to prevent malnutrition in this setting was through a combination of cash and specialized nutritional food. MSF teams use nutrient-rich, ready-to-use foods because they are effective and easy to administer to children. The study shows that combining them with a cash payment helps the most vulnerable families. From an operational perspective of a group like MSF, this is simply another tool in the toolbox of the different strategies we can employ to reduce malnutrition in some of the areas we're working. Mali, South Sudan, Central African Republic. In 2013, MSF treated over 230,000 malnourished children in 30 different countries. The challenge is to step in as early as possible to prevent these children from becoming seriously ill.